The only way you can get closer to the league is if you were sitting courtside. This is NBA Today with Eddie Johnson and Amin El Hassan. Well, look, we're going to get in depth now because we got CP the franchise. That's right. He knows everything about the New York Knicks, and we're just so happy to have him because, you know, CP, we've been going back and forth for the last two days on what's going on with the Knicks, and obviously we're listening to all the analysts, you know, nationwide and, and their thoughts and their process. But you've done a tremendous job. You're a new host for Sirius XM now as well, and glad to have you on board. And uh, so, you know, we're interested to know what's going on because yesterday, I'll just start the first question, you know, yesterday you signed R.J. Barrett. Yeah. And we thought that that would be a part of the trade but I guess back against the wall or maybe the Knicks thinking that they were never going to give him up. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, Eddie, first off, it's, it's great to be on here with you and the men. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting you guys and chopping it up with you guys a little bit at Summer League. So uh, even more of an honor to be on the air with you guys today talking Knicks, you know, something that I love to do. And uh, as you said, last night it was announced that the Knicks signed R.J. Barrett to an extension of four years at $120 million. At the same time, we did hear from Wolves that uh, his name was uh, heavily involved in trade proposals to the Utah Jazz. It seems like the Utah Jazz were very much interested in R.J. Barrett for Donovan Mitchell. However, it seems that uh, they not only wanted R.J. Barrett, but they wanted a considerable amount of unprotected first-round picks as well as Quentin Grimes, another promising prospect uh, that the Knicks have on their roster. And so I think where Leon Rose looked at it was he said, look, this this is too steep for us. But at the same time, we still need to look at taking care of our guy. And that was extending him to that deal four years worth $120 million. Now, they didn't give him the full rookie max, which was five years, 193 with, with incentives and bonuses. But four years, 120 is a number that I was comfortable with. It's one that I thought that he would get in terms of uh, the annual salary and so he could still be a part of a trade to the Utah Jazz but it, it's a bit more complicated because of what's considered the poison pill clause in his contract which would uh, necessitate uh, the Knicks going out or, or sending out an additional 26 million dollars in salary and having about 10 million to take in so it's a bit harder of a trade to make but it's still possible all right yeah, cool one gotcha. of the things I've been asking is Everyone's been talking about how a Donovan Mitchell trade can happen. Where the picks, where the players involved. No one seems to be stopping and asking the question, should a Donovan Mitchell trade happen? And what I mean by that is, the Knicks went to great lengths to go out and get Jalen Brunson, who is a, uh, a lead guard and, and a ball-dominant guard, and a guy who part of why he left where he was was because that wasn't a role he was going to get to play as long as he played next to Luka Doncic. Comes to New York and we get the fanfare and everything. He was happy he's coming home and all that. And it feels like barely a couple weeks into it, the Knicks said, oh, let's get that <laughs> other guy who ball dominant and all that. So let me ask you this. Given yeah. that Jalen Brunson is here, should the Knicks even want to get Donovan Mitchell? And that's not a knock on him, but as far yeah. as just a fit with this roster. You know, it's a great question because it is a tricky fit bringing in a Donovan Mitchell here. And depending on what you have on this roster, if you're saying that maybe they still have Julius Randle and R.J. Barrett or combined with the Jalen Brunson, that's a lot of mouths to feed in that starting lineup. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, I truly believe that when Leon Rose signed on for this job, that Donovan Mitchell was his primary target. That is his guy. They did hire Johnny Bryant from Utah as the associate head coach, not just the assistant coach. The associate head coach, a guy who's worked hand-in-hand -hand with Donovan Mitchell, Damian Lillard as well. Many expect him to maybe be the heir apparent to the head coaching job should Tom Thibodeau uh, be fired or step down. They also hired Walt Perrin from the Utah Jazz, a guy who had a heavy hand in building that team from a scouting perspective over the last 10 years or so. So all those signs kind of pointed to Donovan Mitchell really being the target here for Leon Rose. And Jalen Brunson is another guy who's part of that Leon Rose CAA family. Uh, they just signed Rick Brunson as, a, as an assistant coach. But, you know, they, they're in a pivotal situation here where they have an ability to go out there and, and get their guy a three-time All-Star 25 years old. They know that the Utah Jazz are rebuilding. They just sent the Stifle Tower Rudy Gobert to Minnesota. It is a tricky fit, but these opportunities, I mean, may not present themselves but so many times for Leon Rose during his tenure here with New York. 
you know, they came in here, they've been drafting well, they've been acquiring additional draft picks, but they came in here to get that star. And I think this is what Leon Rose is going for. You just said the key word, get that star. And we've seen the Knicks over the years get exuberant and aggressive in wanting to get a star because you're in New York and you think that's the way to make it happen. And I happen, I think a lot of people happen to thought, and, and I didn't think he was a star, but it was obvious you all thought he was pretty good when you signed Jalen Brunson. Yeah. Like, you gave him $100 million. And he's six foot one. He's undersized. He can't switch over and play two guard. Donovan Mitchell can't guard you. Let's be honest. <laughs> so now, <laughs> so now, I, I, I've been using a meme, but a meme told me his game's kind of weak now, so I, I went to you. All right. I know for a fact he can't guard me. But <laughs> even at 63, I've seen his defense lately. What do you think is going to work when you put – now, we know Tom Thibodeau loves defense. What are they trying to do? Are they trying to kill Tom Thibodeau? I mean, like, you, <laughs> Brunson's not a great, tremendous defender. Okay. Uh, Donovan Mitchell yeah. can't defend. And they're both undersized. I mean, yeah. what comes out of that? I mean, like, I mean, Julius Randle's undersized, even yeah. though he's strong dude. So you have three guys on the floor – that's undersized, that could be taken advantage of defensively. How is that going to yeah. work? You know, that, that's a key question, Eddie. And, and as you pointed out, they lose a lot of positional versatility by bringing these two guys in in the backcourt. You know, they're, they're not switchable. They're both 6'1". They're both small. But, you know, I had uh, Derek Harper on the show last night, former man, former Nick, and, and the way he posted it was... I don't see any shortcomings with playing guys, even if they, they're, they're fortunate enough to get a guy like uh, Spider. I think that still works. You know, you, you just you, you play to your strength and not worry. Make people worry about what you're doing opposed to you worrying worrying about what what somebody else is doing. Hey, listen, you got to play to your strengths. And, and with those two guys, it's going to be on the offensive side of the ball. Like you said, Tom Thibodeau is going to have his, his uh, work cut out for him. He did so last year, you know, bringing in Evan Fournier, bringing in Kemba Walker. The defense was certainly compromised. They were able to steady the ship a little bit. They did finish with the 11th ranked defense in the league. And so, you know, from a team defense standpoint, these guys are going to have to come to play. These guys are going to have to communicate. They're going to have to rotate well. You may have to look at staggering some minutes here and there. You know, maybe one of those guys, maybe a Brunson doesn't necessarily close games in the fourth quarter. If you need a defensive stop, that's going to be on Tibbs. That's why Tibbs was paid the big bucks uh, to come to this city with, with a defensive mindset. Man, I know Derek. I'm, I mean, just quickly, because uh, I want to yeah. go at Derek Harper right quick. Derek Harper <laughs> and I played in college together. Yeah. Okay. All right. We played Illinois together. Derek Harper's motto was defensively. That's right. Now all of a sudden he don't kick. He's getting <laughs> old, man. You just tell Derek, man, I'm old. I'm I'm done with him, man. He's just getting old. Well, what, there's no way that head, came out. That over. came out of his mouth. He played for Pat Riley uh, and I, them tough defensive teams yeah. that they had. Yeah. And all of a sudden you, you play your strengths. Yeah. Man. That. All right. I just had to throw that in. Go ahead, man. <laughs> Hey, the all the all the old players that didn't play defense now they care about defense. Like Eddie Johnson, now all of a sudden he becomes the captain of defense. Where's the defense? Who's gonna guard who? And all the guys that the defensive guys back in the day now they don't care about defense. <laughs> uh, CB, let me, let me ask you: Out of the young guys on this team, McBride, Grimes, quickly, Obi Toppin, Cam Reddish, I guess you could throw in that list as well. Yeah. Who are you most excited for this year? Who do you think? is going to take the biggest leap for me it was grimes it's been grimes since last year it's grimes this year as i said i went out to summer league and got to cover the team and and he was impressive uh because he came in with a three and d floor but at summer league you're starting to see him put the ball on the floor a little bit more he's starting to util utilize his playmaking skills he i talked to him personally and said that was one of the things that he's been working on he's been down in memphis working with penny hardaway also works out in, in houston as well so he's trying to round out his game a little bit um he's a guy who gives us a little bit of or gives the knicks a little bit of that positional versatility some ones strong at the two maybe even some threes although he's around six four but nevertheless, he has that defensive awareness, the defensive IQ that this team is sorely missing. 
and a guy that can create turnovers. That's another thing that the Knicks just aren't that good at, you know, getting into the passing lanes, creating havoc, you know, being a pest, getting getting around pick, pick and rolls. You know, Quentin Grimes is that guy, shot 40% from three. And, you know, look, this is a wing league. You can, you can never have enough wing depth, and he's a guy that I think can, can help this team. But what we're hearing, he's also a guy that Utah – uh, might take in a trade for Donovan Mitchell. So uh, they, they are at risk of losing him. Talking to CP, the franchise, he's a host on SiriusXM and Knicks Fan TV. And I'm just befuddled here because a couple of years ago, the Knicks had a breakout year. Under Tom Thibodeau, things were flowing. Julius Randle had a tremendous season. You can see the, the, the skill set in R.J. Barrett. Uh, they seem to really win on a defensive end. They seem to had a lot have a lot of unity, and they ran into a team in Atlanta that obviously just had Trey Young, and Trey Young was just a problem for them, and he was able to shake loose. And the Knicks, granted, they blew some games in that series that they could have probably won that series and gotten to the conference finals. And so, when you see yourself that close, and then you rebound and you don't have a good year, yeah. right? I mean, are they giving up on them? this quickly like it's just basically a number of months that they just gave up uh on a team that really unified the city in in, in a situation where they had not experienced that in a lot of years no i don't i don't necessarily think they're, they're giving up on it i think they they need a talent infusion in the worst way number one was at the point guard position i think they've help themselves with Jalen Brunson. I won't say that they've solved it, right? I don't think he's a, he's a, he's a guy that's going to solve all their problems, but certainly a guy who's going to be a stabilizing force at that position, provide you some efficiency inside the arc, stellar at the mid range game, something that the Knicks are missing. And so he, I think he's, he's going to be able to solidify them at the point and then potentially getting Donovan Mitchell. Well, one of the things about that year when they made the fourth seed, Derrick Rose had a big hand in, in their success, you know, getting Derrick mm-hmm. Rose at the trade deadline, him yeah. really st- stabilizing that second unit, bringing the young guys like an Obi Toppin and Emmanuel quickly together and really helping them be better pros. Derrick Rose was solid for that team. It's just, you know, when they faced the Hawks, they were so exposed in that they became one-dimensional. And none of the supporting cast around R.J. Barrett really had the ability to put the ball on the floor and make plays for themselves. You know, Derrick Rose ran out of gas. Julius Randle, you know, he was a deer in the headlights. And then the Hawks really exposed him. And so they went out. They tried to get Kemba Walker. Evan Fournier to address the offensive woes, get guys who can create, who can score, and it didn't work. It, it, it didn't work. They finished with 37 wins, missed the playoffs, and so now they're just trying to retool a little bit here, bring in Brunson. They have an opportunity at a Mitchell, so I think they still are, you know, trying to maintain where they were two years ago and, and be better than where they were two years ago. So Eddie asked me earlier, he put a gun to my head, and he said, yeah, you've got to come up with the five best teams in the league, and you can't – everyone's healthy, everyone's good, all the relationships have been fixed and all that. So it's a hard exercise because there are a lot of good teams and a lot of improved teams. As you look around the Eastern Conference and all the improvements that are happening around the Knicks, where do you see – what do you think is a realistic finishing point for the Knicks where they can say we had a good season? You know what? I think they're still battling for a play-in, even if they get Donovan Mitchell, honestly. I think they're still battling for a play-in. you got to look at Boston, give them their respect. I thought if, uh, if Chris Middleton was still healthy, I thought Milwaukee would have taken it all, so I, you still have to put them in there. Philadelphia has retooled. I think the Nets are going to be dangerous. You know, with, with Simmons and, and KD, Kyrie, they solidified their bench. TJ Warren, a guy that you like, Eddie, uh, off of that bench. They're shooting as well. I think you have to respect the Nets. Obviously, Miami. You have Cleveland, who made a strong case last year. Toronto's in that mix. And Atlanta, you know, that's eight. <laughs> that's eight. The, Atlanta with the, the Jonte Murray. So I still see the Knicks, barring injury or, or just, a, you know, stellar season, I still see them battling for, for a playing spot. Man, congratulations uh, for joining SiriusXM. This is CP the franchise. The I guess we're going to see a lot of you. <laughs> and uh, Knicks fan TV as well. I got it right now. See, I called you the franchise when you first got on, yeah. before you got on the show. Well, you're the franchise. The franchise. Okay? And uh, you do a great job, man. And, and congratulations for being on board. And obviously, we'll hear a lot from you uh, this year. So uh, good luck. Go Knicks. 
Thanks a lot, fellas. Pleasure to be on and uh, looking forward to working with you guys. All yes, right. Sir. Take care, my man. Yeah, that's uh, that's some good info there uh, on the Knicks. Thanks a lot. I just want this. Yeah, I just want this to be over. Yeah. Like, just yeah. let's make make it done and, and get it done and. And and we'll be there. As we only got twenty minutes left in this show, I mean, I'm gonna tick you off even more when we come back. Man, I don't know what I'm tired. I'm tired, Eddie. Come on, man. Whatever it is, I'm gonna tick you off. That's <laughs> what I'm gonna do. Eddie Johnson, I mean, L. Hassan. We'll be back. After the break.